Finally, the Oversell Podcast has returned to G-Gen. What's going on, Gen Nation? It's your man, Zuplex City. I'm here with Scythex. This Yo. is the greatest wrestling podcast in the world. Welcome to the Oversell Podcast, where we go over everything going on in the WWE, sometimes AEW. Maybe we'll throw some New Japan in there from time to time, but not really. Oh, <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> But not really. Uh, so, starting off, this week, we really didn't have a lot of content because it was the holidays and everything else. So, Raw was off on this past Monday. Last Monday, they had a they had a Raw. Uh, SmackDown was kind of like just everything was leading up to the, this previous SmackDown on December 30th, the last SmackDown of the year. They were building it to be the best SmackDown of the year. So, it kind of was. It kind of was. It, 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 it kind of was. was a good one. It was a good one. It was a good one. But starting off with the stuff from Raw, really nothing happened except for Alexa. She did the heel turn. She busted Bianca in the back of the head with a vase. We are going full-blown heel Alexa Bliss. I think this is where she thrives the most. 100%. I, I don't really like her as a face. I like her way better as a heel. Her title run as a heel was like was some of the best diva work. It was... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. She's great on the mic. She's much better on the mic when she's a heel. I feel like she's most people heel. are. The, like, it's, it, it's easier, easier that yeah, it's easier for them to be a douche and to be lovey dovey all the time. It's definitely easier to piss people off than get people to love you. Yeah, you know, I think that's really what it comes down to. She is in in the Brave storyline. Also, uh, they brought up the whole like Brave kidnapped her and and she had to go to a psychologist for forever like so you know she, she needs psychiatric help to try to channel that away from her but we know that they've been putting the death moth up on screens it's been every time she sees it she gotta changes i love this for her character and she is knocking it out of the park she is so good when it comes to this. Every time that Death Moth comes on, you can see her old facial structure changes. She goes blank. She doesn't know what to do. And she snaps out of it. Like, we're getting really, really good stuff from Alexa right now. And Yeah, I think and like, sorry to cut you off, but like, no, no, no. when you have, in on like a movie screen or TV show, when you have an actor convince you just by facial expression, <laughs> you know they're a phenomenal actor. Like they're they're Absolutely. killing they're killing their role and she's doing this with the death moth like you just see her whole character just shift gears straight in her face like she's not even saying nothing it's just all in the face and you know what's happening and as she's doing a killer job Absolutely I think this is what the uh, the women's division needed and needed a good a good spark if you will and speaking of the Bray stuff we got a big reveal like kind of reveal. LA Knight, Bray Wyatt, they, they confirmed it. it uh, one shot was right. We're going to have a dark match at, at Royal Rumble. No one knows what that means. <laughs> like, I don't know if the whole thing's going to be just dim lighting. Yeah, I guess. Blacked out. Everything's in the dark. Vision cameras, maybe. Who knows? Who knows what they're going to do? You know who else Girl, was right? You, know, yeah. I, you were right. I think this is 100% Bo Dallas. Yeah, I, 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 I'm telling you right now. Once I saw the size of him, he next you want, to Bray. You want to know what convinced me? He he did his finishing move on him in the ring. It was his finishing move. What was the sister Abigail? No, he did the what is it? The roll dice, rolling dice. Oh, no, he did he did the sister Abigail. Uh, I don't know. It's basically the same move. It's basically the same move, but like. <laughs> The way he did it, I was like, "That's fucking Bo." Dallas. It looked, it looked a lot like Bo Dallas. I'm telling you, I, I think this is the return of Bo Dallas. He is coming back as Uncle Howdy. La Knight's playing it up. I, I actually kind of like as much as like I didn't like La Knight at the beginning of all this. Like the utter confusion on his face. Like he's not even scared. He's just like, "What is going on?" Yeah, this is the rest. So yeah, Bray, <laughs> Bray White's like, "Shut up, don't worry about." It. <laughs> <laughs> Like the rest of us are in the crowd going, what is yeah. happening? He's standing there with us. Like, what? I don't know what's going on here. Like, I don't know, man. It was it was awesome. Yeah, dude. Can, uh, bef 
off topic, but on topic, his entrances, Bray White's entrances, like, that's like, nobody uses the darkness like he can and like how the undertaker did like i i've met you see many people like try um stinger sometimes would go dark and you would see some things here and there but it crossed a little bit yeah but like to capture the darkness and to really make it work for your character bray Y is killing it man i, I love his entrances well, the fireflies help. Like the fans actually help it out because everybody throwing up their cell phones and no. creating that backdrop for them. No. You know, which I mean, he convinced the fans to do a long time ago. You know, and now everybody does it. So yeah, all credit to Bray on that. But yep. you know, that whole backdrop and the slow walk that he learned from the Undertaker going down to the ring, yep. like it is, it's so awesome. Like he, on awesome topic. He, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm cutting you off. I'm, my bad off topic speaking of the undertaker did you did you see the video of him explaining why his entrances were so long yeah or if he knew it was gonna be a boring match yeah he was like if my opponent was trash in the ring or i knew it was gonna be a bad match he's like i'd milk the entrance for the longest <laughs> just to get some filler time in there to milk the clock i'm like this guy's a maniac that's so funny Oh, I was like, oh, God, I got to fight this guy. All right, 20-minute intro. <laughs> <laughs> and he would do a 20-minute intro. It would be the longest thing ever. I'll tell you, as much as I don't, as much as I hate seeing The Undertaker retire because I love him so much, Yeah, like getting this version where he's just open and candid and doing interviews and talking about, like, his career and stuff, because there was so much mystery around him. He kept his, he kept it so private to protect his, oh, his he gimmick. Was in character for like 50 years. <laughs> like, I know. So see him as Mark Galloway now being like, yeah, you know, I just, it was a crappy opponent. I just milked the entrance. I'm like, yep. oh my God, this guy's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely Incredible. amazing. But the, uh, now do we think we're going to get the rest of the Firefly Funhouse? Or is it just Uncle Howdy and Alexa? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, like, do we get, do we get a Huskers? Do we get the Buzzard? Like, I, dude, I have no idea, man. I don't know where where they're gonna go with this, or if it's just maybe. A, I don't know. And it seems like we're gonna find out way more at the Rumble. Yeah, they're headed. They're heading for the Rumble. We are on the road to the Royal Rumble, and the Royal Rumble starts the road to WrestleMania. So this is prime time, like the best time for wrestling. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, could they do it, though, in the Royal Rumble entrances? If, is Bray going to be in the Rumble and then, like, Uncle Howdy's in the Rumble? And I, I don't know. I don't know. More, I, I, more people in the faction join the Rumble and you're like, oh, shit, you know? I think they're going to keep him away from the Rumble altogether only because he's going to have the dark match, which is going to be, a, I guess, a big draw for the Rumble. So for the Rumble event, not the actual Royal Rumble, you know? Yeah. So I think with them having the dark match, I think they're going to keep them kind of away from the actual Rumble match. It I'm doesn't, still, it doesn't it, stop them, though. Sometimes they'll have a match and then they'll be in the Rumble later on. Like, yeah, I mean, that's true. But like a match like this where it's like a spectacle, yeah, you know, dark match or whatever, usually they keep them kind of away from the the royal rumble match which you know i mean we, we gotta wait and see what happens with all that yeah speaking of the rumble we got the women's royal rumble starting to shake up and the whole landscape of everything changed because Carly came back <laughs> yeah <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> ronda fight cases raquel rodriguez went I, across and the, it was the actually on. A, a solid match. I, I give I give both of them credit because usually I hate Ronda matches because she's just kind of so awkward in the you, ring. You could tell but, she was awkward in the ring too, but Ra Raquel's so good yeah. and so strong, she was able to like kind of counter Ronda's trash. I yeah, guess you could yeah, and, and like, the, the the way Ronda won, I thought was really good. She got slammed yeah. holding holding the R bar, and I thought that was really cool. I still hated her losing because, or winning because her title run is just so annoying to me. It's over. <laughs> it's over because Charlotte Flair came back, and I'll let you continue on with that. Charlotte shows up and challenges Ronda. And Ronda's given the whole like, "Oh, maybe you want to fight me at SummerSlam? Maybe the Royal Rumble? Like, when do you?" I don't even know why she said SummerSlam. She definitely screwed that oh, up. She botched that. She botched it. 
Yeah. I had to be. But Charlotte just goes, no, I want to fight you tonight. And like this kind of annoyed me. I'm not as much as I like seeing Ronda lose and get the title off of her and onto Charlotte, who I think should be the champion. Mm -hmm. I would have much rather this been, you know, she went full heel with him. Like, no, I'm not fighting tonight. You fight me at the Rumble, blah, 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 blah. You know, doing it like right after she just had a match kind of made no sense to me, story wise. And like, you can milk this out for longer. I am happy that Ronda Sons is in the end. 100%. Uh, you, she's going to get like a WrestleMania run or something, though. You know, assuming she's going to be in the Rumble, she might end up winning the Rumble now. Yeah, probably. Which is, which is a high possibility for her to win the rumble she's now. gonna she's gonna get her rematch clause i would think so maybe the, maybe do the rematch at, at rumble i'm not sure maybe we'll find out we'll probably find out next week on smackdown but it, they would be it would be awesome if they did that at rumble only because then it would kind of stop her from being in the rumble because i feel yeah. like uh either the men go first or the women go first like in the, it's like the beginning and the end right and then yeah. all the stuff yeah. in between so if they do I'm, the women assuming first, the women, then... I'm assuming the women start yeah the rum uh the royal rumble this year because the men's rumble seems to be shaking up with the better storylines especially when you go to drew coming back the possibility the rumors that we're all hearing about cody coming back yeah it's like inevitable that dude yeah so i mean like if you have cody coming back to win the rumble you want that as your 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 last like look it's him pointing at the WrestleMania side. Correct. Like, you don't, you don't open the show with that. No, and, and you don't want to end the show with Ronda pointing at it again. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, again. Well, let's want it again. Yeah. No, but I mean, there's some, you know, there's some dark horses I think that they can have. I think it's kind of confirmed that Sasha is not coming back. Um, I read somewhere that she uh, changed her name. She well, she trademarked a whole bunch of new names for for a different promotion. So I'm sure where she's gonna show up in AEW. Yeah, I would think so. I mean well, that would be the deal. logical choice, but they have the deal with New Japan and New Japan. I think she wanted to go to New Japan, but she, more than likely Tony Khan's just gonna bring her over from New Japan to AEW anyway. So we'll see we'll see what happens with Sasha. Right now the women's division is is shaping up like they gotta start bringing some of these uh the nxt chicks up like they've lost mandy they've lost sasha right you you finally get charlotte back you got becky back which is great yeah alexa's doing her thing which is awesome bianca's top notch you know but then outside of that you got botcha mania ronda and Botchamania. <laughs> raquel rodriguez impressed me though she looked great yeah you know shot the Shotzi looked great against Ronda also. It was Ronda that looked terrible with it, you know? So you put Shotzi with some of the better girls, I think it, it, it works out a little bit better. So we gotta we gotta wait and see what, how the how the female Royal Rumble is gonna all play out, but. And again, we could, have, uh, uh, we could have AEW ones coming over, depending on their contract wise. Yeah, yeah, I don't know whose contract's up by then, like, yeah. The big ones, the you know, the big names aren't going to be coming over. I have been hearing a lot of like, a lot of like, a forbidden door is going to be opening at the Royal Rumble. So I mean, AEW kind of started the forbidden door thing where like a random ass wrestler from a, another promotion just auto, you know, randomly shows up. I don't like, know who for, it could a, be. for like a one time thing. Yeah, for like a one time thing, but I don't know who it could be. Like, there's plenty of plenty of guys in tna that could be popping over so you know i know wwe the fact that tna is still like round blows my mind <laughs> it's absolutely insane <laughs> like but drew came where back. are those guys <laughs> but drew drew came back with the brawling brutes after they fought the you know uh, the usos for the nine billion freaking time yeah like, I just, I don't know. That was a solo match, but it was, it was just the, the Brutes versus yeah. the other line. Yeah, it was it was, it was was a solo Sequoia. Solo looks amazing every time yeah. he gets in the ring. Yeah. yeah. He looks better and better. Seamus was giving him work, though, man. Giving him I mean, work. He's a pro, man. The, the, dude, the dude is a solid pro. 
He's always been good in the ring. But he's just and, boring. I, and uh, I think it was Michael Cole who said it. He goes, I've been following Sheamus' career since he came to WWE. He's like, this year has been his best year in the ring. And I was like, I, I agree. Like, Sheamus has been killing it in the ring. Well, they're, they're saying, everybody's saying that his match with Gunther at Clash of the Castle is probably going to win match of the year. Really? It was a hell of a match. Like, yeah. it was, like, as far as, like, old school chop them down wrestling is concerned, that was, it was like watching something from, like, the early 90s. It was great. It was absolutely great. Yeah. Fant it was a fantastic match. I mean, it, that's definitely up there for match of the year. You know, Drew came back. It doesn't really change much. Like, I don't know. He's a bowling brute at, and, and uh, like, I, uh, he's not, yeah. but he is at this point. Like, he's always with them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I don't know if it changes anything for the landscape of things or, or anything along those lines, but that brings us into the big match of the night. Mr. You Can't See Me came back. You know, John Cena. You know what I could see, though? His hair, line, his hair thinning in the back. <laughs> <laughs> from, from a fellow Baldy here, uh, I felt I felt his pain trying to cover that up back there. Yeah, uh, 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 he definitely should have been stopped with the Bruno and started with the Rogaine a little bit. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it looks like it looks like he's gotten a little bit smaller too. You think? Yeah, he's not he's not Super Cena anymore. You know what I mean? Like that that saying like ah you know yeah but he looked great yes it's john cena man like the guy's always gonna he's a, he's a showman man he's a showman he, 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 you know just him being on the uh, on the side of on the other side of the ropes while you know ko is doing his thing he, he's entertaining the crowd and, and everyone yeah. else like it's Absolutely. just it's better when he's around but as long as he's done correctly as far as a character i agree with that and i think uh I think it was a it was a good time for him and Kevin to be together and, and do the tag match and everything like that. Like Owens has gone on record saying his son's a huge John Cena fan, so I'm sure this meant a lot to him to tag with John and do the whole like against the bloodline thing. I'm sure his kid was going nuts so over. Yeah, and he they both did the <laughs> move the, the, five the five uh, knuckle shuffle. <laughs> five knuckle shuffle. Yep. You know, which was really awesome to see. Does this it sets up Kevin Owens versus Roman, right? For Rumble? Does it? Maybe. I guess. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm good. Uh, I, I'm thinking, short. thinking it could set up more KO versus Sammy. I don't, it, yeah, but I, I don't know if that... I think they're going to put the, the title on the line for the Rumble, though. Think so? Yeah, I, I guess they could. They're the Rumble, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess you're right. So I think it's just... I think what's going to end up happening is it's going to be KO versus Sammy on SmackDown for the right for KO to fight Roman at the Rumble. Yeah. And KO beats Sammy, and that's what puts Sammy in the doghouse with the Tribal Chief. Well, he's probably there now. Uh, he was on so his ass beat. Tells him, like, the only way you can redeem him is by facing Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens is like, the only way I'm facing you is if I beat Sammy, then I'm fighting Roman for the title at, at, at Royal Rumble. You know, that could be the storyline that they go with. I could definitely see that happening. And then you get Roman versus KO for the title. We got the dark match. We got the women's title up, like uh, Alexa versus Bianca, right? And then Valley knows what Charlotte's going to do. She's probably just going to sit back and wait to see who wins the Rumble. And your two Rumble matches, that's probably all the matches we have for the Royal Rumble. It's, I, I think the card is pretty much set at this point. Yeah, I mean, unless you add Charlotte fighting uh, Ronda. Yeah, but why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, to keep Ronda out of the Rumble. <laughs> I, like, I, in all honesty, I don't think they can keep anybody out of the Rumble when it comes to the females because... Yeah, because they only have 30? I don't even think they have 30. That, like, that's why they're going to be pulling in all the NXT people. I mean, like, in the years past, like, you've seen... That's why, like, the Women's Rumble had so many former divas and former women's champions come back. It's because they had to really fill out the roster because they didn't have 30 chicks jump in that ring. So it was it was kind of like, we got to fill it out with somebody. Let's let's call all the, uh, the chicks from, you know, back in the day, the old-timers. 
you know, and I think they're going to have to do that again, you know, fill it out somehow, but I'd rather them bring up some of the girls from, from NXT. Yeah. Like I, I think Mandy's crew is going to be in there. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely see GD Dolan. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, th I, I think they're just, they're ready for the main card. Uh, whether Mandy's, they're ready for the main card. I mean, they should really bring them up anyway to start pushing this, uh, the I mean, mag chaser. Yeah. The main roster. Yeah. They should bring them up anyway to start really pushing the the female. I did most underutilized belts in the in the business right now. The women's tag champs, like because you don't have a lot of women's tag teams. You know, you you have you have damage control, and then you have a bunch of other chicks that they kind of just slap together. They're like, all right, you guys fight damage control now. Now you guys fight damage control. You know, they don't tell you they have the iconics and the and the 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 funkadactyls and you know all these all these women the bellas they definitely need to start creating more women's tag teams to make that division a little bit more defined you know yeah i mean uh and it's like what they're doing with the the on the men's side it, they're like for me like and i think i said it in a previous episode wrestling is at its best when there's multiple factions and you have yeah. different storylines coming off those factions different having beef with each other that sets up one-on-ones for a title or whatever it may be and you never really have that with the girls like you're starting to with uh damn like her yes damn it yes so like you have her group but there's really no other group that's like combating that you know what i mean and like you have what rhea ripley's part of what the oc uh, you have like judgment other... day yeah the judgment day i thought that was that no was... rhea ripley's part of the judgment day and then mia yim's part of the oc oh you're right i had a but you get what i'm saying like you have the females joining like the male factions but not creating their own faction so yeah i mean we definitely need to see more of that Oh, uh, toxic attraction is definitely that's why getting rid of Mandy, I think, is a is a stupid move on their part because they could have brought them off the face damage control, you know, and then at least you have two factions in the in the female side going against each other. And they could have been really dynamic with each other too, you know. Now you kind of have to like piecemeal shit together and start creating factions out of nowhere. What do you do? You know? You got Tegan Knox and Luke Morgan, like that's kind of a thing. I don't know. They need to figure something out and, and like get some, get some, get creative, I guess. I, I don't know. It just seems very stale. Like it's the same people. Ronda's always fighting the same people for the belt. Yeah. Like no, now well, Charlotte, Charlotte coming back. Charlotte coming back definitely changes things up. And like, you want to see those big name matches also, you know, you want to see, you want to see Charlotte versus Becky because then, you know, they're going to put on the best show, you know? Yeah, it's like I don't know if we're gonna get that though. Nah, we're, I don't think we're gonna get that because Becky's doing the whole thing with Bailey right now. But you know, you're gonna get like Charlotte does make Ronda look better. She does make Ronda look good. Who else could go against Charlotte right now? Really, the matchup is Charlotte versus Bianca. Yeah, that's really the matchup you wanted. But they're on opposite ends with each having the title. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if And you don't want them you don't want you don't want to have like a Roman Reigns scenario where yeah, like controlling both honestly, titles. The biggest problem that the bloodline storyline has is that they have all of the titles locked up. I'm I'm almost okay with like the Roman having both uh both titles, but the tag titles being all locked up by the Usos really, really hinders the whole division. Yeah. It's now like like there's nothing for any tag teams to go after. It's like you have to fight the Usos for something. Oh, great! Like they're never gonna lose at this point. Yeah, you know, I, I so do. I do before <laughs> all that goes away because at some point it, it, it's gonna go away. I do want to see Sammy winning like the Intercontinental yeah. title or or the USA title and and having Solo win USA or yeah. Intercontinental. And just having the whole bloodline just raise a belt in the ring or something. Yeah, you want that image. Yeah, you want that image of just pure dominance yeah. in, in, in WWE and to establish that faction. 
I think it would be awesome. And then once you get that, then you start crumbling it from the inside and, and like so-and-so backstabs, you know, so-and-so and they lose the title. Yeah. Team, like, and you start just crumbling and really picking apart the bloodline. I think that would be. Yeah. You bring in, you bring in, um, another faction to kind of start picking them apart. Maybe something yeah. along those lines, you know, like, it's so like, like the, the Wyatts. <laughs> That would be cool, man. Now, dude, Bray versus Roman would be an awesome bout. I mean, that's that's the matchup I want for WrestleMania. I'm not gonna lie, I want Bray versus Roman for WrestleMania, and I want like full blown, crazy dark Bray Wyatt, and him completely dismantle the bloodline from within using like psychological warfare and everything like that. I, I still think though, uh, it's hard for it to go that long, yeah. but I still think it's going to go till next WrestleMania, unless some some crazy happens. I mean, maybe Roman is what a hundred. I think it, it was he's a hundred and fifty days away from hitting a thousand days of being uh, the title holder. So yeah, I feel like at that point you're in record mode and you don't break that up, but. Do they care about it? I don't know. They keep mentioning it every time he's out there. Yeah, so that means they care about it. They're going to let him go to the thousand mark. Which... Right. So at that point, then you're looking towards WrestleMania yeah, again. That, that puts you at where? Uh, no, it was WrestleMania's in less than 150 days. No, I'm saying the following. Like at that point, then oh, you just no. go till the next WrestleMania. Because I. I I don't think you break up the bloodline and like Roman's dominance at like the Survivor Series or the SummerSlam. Like it's got to be like WrestleMania. For me. I agree. It's got to be. It's got to be a WrestleMania thing. But if you do it with Bray, don't necessarily have to break up the bloodline. Right, and, and you can make it to where he loses and then gets it back, and it's like a back and forth. Yeah. Thing. So no, we'll we'll have to wait and see on how that all shakes out. But I'm I'm geared up for Mania, man. We are like 25 days away. <laughs> and I'm very excited, dude. Uh, it, it's it's the best part. Is that it's the best time period of wrestling? Like World the most wrestling. creative stories is between the Rumble and WrestleMania. It's where you watch every Raw and every SmackDown because you know something crazy is going to happen that's going to push you even Almost closer. Everywhere. Yeah, and it's Almost just certain. all all the pay per views that are like. Uh, what is there are like one or two in between um yeah it's they're, they're like whatever matches because it's still building towards that wrestlemania match uh, i can't wait exactly it, it's the yeah. best time of the year the uh all, all the all the ones in between because i think there's two in between right usually it's like fast lane yeah fast lane and i think they added something else Elimination Chamber. Is it Elimination Chamber? Yeah. That's one of my favorite exactly. pay-per-views. <laughs> I love the Elimination Chamber, dude. Oh, actually, that's going to be... Yeah, it's, it's Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, and then WrestleMania. Oh, so no more Fastlane? Because then after WrestleMania is what, Backlash? Usually, yeah. Yeah. Usually that's what happens. It's WrestleMania and then WrestleMania Backlash. Yeah. Got a couple of big NXT... Uh, events in between two Benjamin stay and stand and deliver so we'll see how that goes but yeah so I mean Elimination Chamber is big though yeah it's huge in between, in between Rumble and, and Mania that's a big that's a big one to have so we get it's it gonna be a great great few months between dude like who do alright so would the Elimination Chamber so well, I mean it all depends on the Rumble right but well that's but that's an interesting thing right if so whoever wins the rumble they have to face raw or well yeah because he has both titles right but then what if roman only puts one of the titles up for elimination champ yeah he could lose one title still remain the champion with could the other one could do that and then you have two titles going into mania could do that um or like oh well my thinking was so whoever wins, I guess the Rumble is gonna face Roman. So then, who? What would be? 
like the elimination chamber match because usually it's like those four to five uh, what is it six people those six people are trying to be the number one contender or they're going after the belt yeah so well that's what i'm saying so if roman competes in uh in the elimination chamber he only has to put up one belt technically he doesn't have to put up both you know I don't know how they would. Would it? What if they? What if? What if they make Roman wrestle twice WrestleMania? Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah. So like, think of think of this. Like, that would be interesting. You add. I could see Roman being like, throw Sammy in the elimination chamber, and uh, if he doesn't win, or the, the like, what he's supposed to? I guess. Well, actually, you could do an intercontinental elimination chamber. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, I, is that really what we want to say? I mean, <laughs> I, I personally, I, I just want the title there was not that year. be with Gunther or whatever. <laughs> there was that year that they did the tag team elimination chamber, but that was straight chaos. Yeah, no, nah, that was not. <laughs> that was not. That was, that was like a war. That was a war zone match. Yeah, it was war game. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see because. So, they used to do Money in the Bank before WrestleMania, right? Did they? Because it's been cashed in at WrestleMania. Yeah. Was that from? I can't oh. remember, but no, Money in the Bank. Been, been, he could have been holding on to that forever, though. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That is true. Because I was going to say maybe Money in the Bank. I don't. There's so yeah. many different ways to go with this. But Elimination Chamber is going to be interesting to see how they they play that out now. But yeah. we're getting we're getting really ahead of ourselves. We got to wait till Cody wins the Royal Rumble. I'm calling it here. I'm calling it now. I'm the greatest wrestling podcast of all time. Cody goes back and wins the Royal Rumble. I, I would probably agree. My uh, my secondary option would be KO. He somehow inserts himself into the Rumble after losing at the Rumble. And uh, he gets his rematch at WrestleMania. Uh, I like that one too. I like that one too. But it, like, if Cody's coming back, he's, he's probably the guy. Yeah, it's got to be the guy, right? Yeah, because then, well, like, why why waste it on a on a rumble if he's not winning when you can have now, him come back? You know, that's that's interesting though. Now that I'm thinking about it, what if Cody wins the rumble and faces Seth for the Intercontinental Championship after Seth beats what's that? Face? Austin Theory could do that. He just doesn't means, pick the title. He goes for Intercontinental. He could do that. I mean, he had the he had the feud with with Rollins before. Rollins the one to put him out. So yeah, maybe that's how they go with this. And then and Rollins she wasn't Rollins um, was talking about him recently, right? Yeah. So and then Elimination Chamber picks and faces Roman. Could do that's that. That's a possibility. I would hate that though. Well, but so, so well, well, let's go down this. This hypothetical, right? Who's who's the six people trying to be the number one contender? I mean, it'll probably be Seamus. Seamus. <laughs> <Shame to say. laughs> Seamus. Uh Braun Strowman. Brock Lesnar. I don't even think he would be there. Brock might return for that. Brock might return for the Rumble also. Would he fit in the elimination? <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see, it'll be it'll be Seamus. Almost Bobby Lashley, the worst elimination chamber ever. Who else can we throw in there? That'd be terrible to watch. Yeah, it'd be... <laughs> mm. No, in all honesty, it, it would probably be KO. Oh, yeah. Um, assume KO, maybe Rollins, maybe Cody, depending on what happens with the Rumble. No. I'm assuming I, Cody's like he changes re- WrestleMania for the title or. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we're going to have to wait and see what happens yeah. in the Rumble. We'll, we'll have plenty of time to figure out our predictions for Elimination Chamber after the Royal Rumble at the end of the month. It, so. it does get the wheel spinning, though, to think that's far ahead because there's so many possibilities. And with Roman having both titles, it's like, what are they going to do? It, you got to make the Elimination Chamber worth it, right? Absolutely, you do. So, no. we got to see how it goes. But... That's it for us tonight on the Oversell Podcast. Thank you, everybody, for 
sticking around, listening to us jabber on and like a bunch of jabber. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, brother. Um, make sure you guys like, follow, and subscribe. Everything on GGen. Uh, we have round two of the trivia game starting. Multiversal podcast is starting back up, right? Uh, when, you, when you're dropping that. That'll be this weekend. And we have the theater room on Tuesday. Theory Room on Tuesday, episode two of the key list is coming out sometime next week. Uh, new unboxing video from yours truly just dropped. We got streaming going on. Uh, big, big tournament's going to be starting soon, right? We got the, yeah. I don't know if uh, announced any of that yet. Still need three players. I think. We need three players for that. Um, we got a lot going on here on g -Gen. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, reactions every day, basically at this point. <laughs> yeah. On, on everything you know uh hit that bell make sure you have notifications on so you don't miss anything coming from your favorite uh pop culture guys man so yeah. this man zuplex city man Scythex. we are out of here doses peace